All right, so in building the duotone color, by making a duplicate of the flat local color behind and making it brighter, and then deleting from that, I can get kind of a middle step if the highlights seem too strong in some places. So let me show you that. Oops. So I can get a middle step because duotone is any variation of the local color, lights and darks. Of course, I can still cut away from my shadows. And you play and kind of find your way through all these different options until you get something you want. Now this is still pretty straightforward coloring. Yeah, that's not, that's not what I want, let's see. but it should support your, your line work. So what I've done is I've really pushed the highlights. And so where I feel they're too strong, now I can cut away and get a middle tone but only where I have highlights exposed. So I think down the whole snake, I'm gonna cut away from my shadows a little bit further, and then down the middle of the snake. So right there, and then down the middle of the snake, I'll get rid of those stronger highlights. So it looks a little bit more rounded as it goes around. Same thing here. Get rid of the shadows, then get rid of those secondary highlights. Now then you might say, well, what about these little mistakes I've made? How can you fix it? Well, you can go right into the duotone layer if you want, which is 100% normal layer. Go to your brush tool, use option to steal the color, and then just paint it in. To fix these little little gaps. This is if you're doing really really strict duotone coloring. And you know if you spend a lot of time you can do a lot of detail. I don't know that that's necessary or even very interesting. But it's it's possible. Okay, and because I'm doing cut edge duotone, I'm using a very sharp edged brush. You know, 100% hardness, as they say, on the brush for that technique. And just using the brush allows me to paint those shapes anywhere. I don't need to draw them with a lasso and delete. I can add them in. And if I want a darker red on part of the tongue, as long as it's still a version of red, it's still duotone. I can do it. If I want to steal a tone from somewhere else and paint it in, I can do that. But it should be a variation of my original color, just to keep it as do a tone. So if I just push the color slider lower down, I can paint within these kind of skull colors in these areas and create a new shadow duotone that wasn't there before. As long as it's a version of the local color. It's perfectly acceptable. So digital coloring kind of has its own rules that we follow.
I'm going to show you how we mess with it even further. Now, I really like kind of retro coloring. And so I really like duotone cut edge. But there's another type of duotone that I want to show. Not that you have to use all of them, but so that you know the options. And that is soft edge duotone, or what's sometimes called gradated edge. And to give you an example of that, first I want to save all of these layers. And I want to get kind of a middle, a middle tone on the wing through the core of it. There we go. It's a little more dynamic that way. And a few more middle tones to break these up. And I think we're good. All right. So once you have your cut edge duotone color, if you want to play with softening it, it's very simple. All I'm going to do is duplicate both of them both my shadows and my highlights. So I have a copy of each one. Then I'm going to lock my shadows and my highlights underneath. I can decide to turn them off if I want. All right, so we have flat color. We have our highlights based on our flat color, but brightened and then cut out. And then we have our shadows based on our flat color and darkened and cut out. Let me do it with the shadows first because they're easier to see. I just take that layer and I go to filter and I go to blur and I go to Gaussian blur. It's the only filter we'll routinely use in this class. And then I push it until it softens all of my lines. You can see it's like spraying uh, a watercolor with water and having it dissolve. So it takes those sharp edges and turns them soft. Maybe easiest to see on a white background. The problem is it also pushes outside of your outlines a little bit. So you do that, and then what you want to do is go back to your vector line work, which is still a smart layer. You want to have contiguous turned on and select the space outside of it, and then delete that from your, your duotone soft edge layers. This is just one way you can do it. You can also just paint with a soft edge brush, right? Or erase with a soft edged eraser. So now I've got duotone soft edge shadows. Let's do that with highlights. I'm going to rename the layer soft edge. And I'm going to try this filter Gaussian blur, same settings. And you see how it softens them all. So it's much more subtle, but then when I add them together, I get something that looks more rounded, a little bit more three-dimensional, but not as retro. Right. Now what I like about doing the, the soft edge is that I can also add layer styles to it overall. And the layer style I want to add is a gradient overlay. And this one is this really colorful gradient overlay at 100%. That's not what I want. I want just a regular light to dark gradient overlay. And I want to really play with its opacity and its setting. And I might set it to be an overlay layer. And then I can set its angle. So that's a little bit darker on the ground, a little brighter as it comes up. And I want it to be linear. There we go. 
So you can see here, so I want the shadows on the bottom to be stronger than the ones at the top. And if I set it to normal, and then just take the opacity way down, you can see how that affects my duotone soft edge color in a pretty dramatic way. Now, if you want to, you can also, well, we'll play with full spectrum later. So that's without the gradients, that's with the gradient. And it mo mostly affects as we go lower down. Now I can do the same thing with my soft edge highlights. I can add a gradient overlay. So it's a little bit darker at the bottom than at the top. And that just helps to round it out even more. But it tends to wash out a lot of the cool things we did with our cut edge. And then you just want to make sure on each of them, on like my soft edge one, I want to go to my vector line work, select the outside space with contiguous. Oh, that's why, because it went into the tail. Ah, bummer. That's why I lost the shadows on my tail. So let me go in the history before that. There, I've got everything. So I go to my vector. Let's see, so how do I fix getting in the tail? I make a duplicate of it, I rasterize it, and then I simply paint a way to block off the tail. So it doesn't leak in. This is just to select everything. And then I select my empty space from that. There we go. Oh, and I don't want to lose all the shadows in here. So I have to block off the skull too. I think that's the only place it's open. Let's see. With the magic wand. Add these little peekaboos. Good. So now I can delete from my shadows layer. Ah, I still got the tail. Where is it getting in? Oh, from right there. Lots of problem solving. These are not permanent marks I'm making. It's just helping me get the, a better selection. Oh, wrong layer. I think I painted on the wrong layer. So you can see why the flatting really matters. So you have easy ways of selecting these things. All right, then select the outside of your vector, of your of the copy of my vector layer. And then I can delete that from my shadows. And then I can soften my highlights in the same way. And then I can delete from the outside of the highlights, even though I don't see them very much on the white. Ah. <laughs> Hold down shift, add in these cutouts. And delete from both for good measure. All right, there we go. So that is soft edge coloring. Do a tone. This is cut edge. So you can see they're pretty dramatically different. You don't usually combine them, at least on the same textures, the same local thing, but there's no reason you can't exper experiment. And so sometimes I'll put these in different folders. So I'll put my uh, soft edge together in its folder. Soft edge duotone. And then my cut edge do a tone. 